Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 22. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 22. When that hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said to them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. But behold the hand of hell that betrayed me. It's with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth, as it was determined, with woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. I just read Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 22. Maybe by a hint. Dear the Father, this morning we come to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. From last night you slaying down to you waking us up to see another day this morning, we tell you thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for health and strength this morning, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you for getting us through the week so we can come here and praise your name, Lord. Lord, keep your armor of protection around us, Lord. Keep us on the right path for just following you. Yes. Lord, be with the ones who on their way, Lord. Be with the ones that wanted to be here but couldn't make it, Lord. Lord, be with the sick and shut in, Lord. Anybody who suffered a loss over the week, Lord, put, wrap your arms around them, Lord. Lord, uh, Thank you. Yeah, we yeah. love you. Let's have a good service this morning, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.
And Lord, we just have to continue to trust you, oh Lord. Now, Lord, we ask that you would bless this worship experience, Lord. Let it be all that you would have it to be and none of what we would want it to be. Let, let somebody be liberated. Let somebody be set free. Let somebody be delivered. Let somebody be healed. Because of your word. Lord, we thank you. We lift you up. And we offer these simple but humble words to the O oh Lord. Asking that you would accept you. Lord, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. And for his sake. Amen.
Ron Goody not one other time. He's already going up. Amen. Amen. First of all, we are going to pray for you. To our preachers, to our congregation, to our deacons, members, and friends. It's just good to be here. Amen. If the Lord doesn't do anything else, he's already done. He can't bless me once. He blessed me twice. He blessed me all of my life. If he don't do anything Is love. 
we need it in every area of life. We need love on our job. We need more love in our home. We need more love in our schools. We need more love with our friends. We just need more love. And love is an action word. I know it's abstract, but uh, uh, love, uh, you can't see love. Uh, somebody can tell you they love you, but, but as my great auntie used to say, I would rather see a sermon than hear a sermon. In other words, I would rather see love in action than to hear love's words. You know, young people, I, I, I know something about writing. I love them. Y'all grew up in a time that you have text messaging and email, but that was an hour that if you were going to correspond with someone who lived out of town, you had to write a letter. Oh, somebody in here knows what I'm talking about, Brandon. But you had to be dedicated and committed to write a letter. You, you, you had to be detailed. You, you had to be able to paint a picture. You had to make your words come to life. And as a matter of fact, I could remember that during my times of writing love letters, uh, I would try to spray a little cologne on the letter uh, to make her understand that it was her boo, her baby that was writing these words. And she would in return put lipstick and heart on the return letter, we were in love writing letters. There's some things y'all gonna miss. There's some, there's some things y'all gonna miss. You, you write a letter and you had to put it in the mailbox and you eagerly anticipated the arrival of the return to the response that you got. Oh, but now we have this instant gratification. We can FaceTime. There is no courtship anymore. It was in these letters that we learned how to court. <laughs> you, 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 you would write and, and say, Roses are red, violets are blue. You like me and I like you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey, hey, you, you would write that letter and, and you would ask, do, 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 will, will you be my girlfriend? And, 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 and you would check that little box and fill little box and yes, no, and maybe. And, 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 and I didn't have a problem with the maybe. I, I was always looking for yes. I stopped by the day this morning that God had written us a love letter. God has written us a letter to grab the attention of men, women, boys and girls of every walk of life. God wants us to know that he has made a way for us and all we have to do is accept the terms of the relationship. You know, if you think about it, this text is one of those texts that if any text Satan could get rid of and wipe out of the Bible, it would be John 3.16. If there is any text that has made the foundations of hell tremble, it is John 3.16. If there is any text that has lightened up the pathway of heaven for the multitudes of men and women, it is John 3.16. If there is any text that deserves to be called the little Bible, it is John 3.16 because this verse speaks to Nicodemus and embodies the whole truth of God's love and his infinite plan for redemption. It is a worldwide in scope, yet it is a personal letter to every individual. It is a love letter from heaven. God is writing to tell us how much he really loves us. He doesn't just stop at the extent that he tells us, but God shows us. And you can tell somebody you love them, but unless you show them, you just give them lip service. I, I 
can tell you I love you, but but if I'm not willing to do anything for you, my love is superficial. I think it was Keith Sweat that said, how deep is your love? And when you really love something, you treasure that you love. You will go a little farther. You will stay a little longer. You will do a little extra. As a matter of fact, you will do some things that you said you never would do when you find yourself in love. But, 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 but this love letter, this, this love letter from God, this letter from God is a love letter, and I say this because the writer of this letter is God, the creator and divine lover of our souls. God loves us so much that Peter says God's desire is that all should be saved and that no one should perish. God loves us, and he loves us so. The subject of the letter is love, and love is deep and concern for our welfare and needs God writes this love letter, and he reminds us through the right of John how much he loved us. He tells us, first let me back you up, he has this conversation, Jesus, with Nicodemus. Nicodemus was somebody of the upper echelon. But the Bible said that he came to Jesus at night. And as they conversated, Jesus says, you must be born again. And the problem with the modern day church is we got a whole lot of folk that say they're on the Lord's side but ain't been born again. And he says, you must be born again. It baffles the mind of Nicodemus. Nicodemus says, how is it so? How can a man such as myself Oh, be born again. Can I enter my mother's womb a second time? What he didn't understand is that Jesus was not talking about physical birth, but about spiritual birth. And the reason why so many times we can't see the spiritual things of God is because we have not been spiritually born. He says, you must be born of the water and of the spirit, or you can't see heaven. But he walks on a little farther, and this conversation continues because Nicodemus could have left there with a heavy heart. Jesus says, if I tell, told you earthly things and you didn't understand them, and I tell you heavenly things, how are you going to perceive them? This is all I'm going to say. Just as Moses yes, lifted up the snake in the will, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Jesus lets them know. God lets us know how much he loves us. For John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The, the, the first thing I want to lift about this love letter from God is that this letter is written in crimson ink. Yes, sir. Paul says in Romans 5 and 9, well, since Christ's blood has now given us God's approval, we are even more certain that Christ will save us from God's anger. We were bought with a price. If you think about it, this, this letter written in crimson, he, he, he gave us 
his only begotten son if you think that one third of the gospel is devoted to the sacrifice of Christ. The gospel tells many stories and miracles that Jesus did, but one third of the story is dedicated to what Christ did for us. And I know this morning that we think we do everything in and of ourselves, but if God had not initiated his plan throughout uh, history, we would still be messed up. Well, well. Let, me, let me tell you something else about this love letter. This love letter, if you think about the sacrifice of Christ, no part of his body escaped suffering. <laughs> Think about his hands and his feet. They were pierced with nails. <laughs> his temples, the sides of his head, they were lacerated with thorns. <laughs> you remember the Bible story said that his tongue cleaved to the roof of his mouth. <laughs> the Bible also said that his throat was parts with thirst. You remember the Bible gives a description of how his back was torn with the scores. Matter of fact, I heard the Bible writers say that they whipped him all night long. They not only whipped my Lord, but they in his side, they pierced him with a spear. Every muscle of his body was stretched in agony. You remember, I can't believe that his nerves became a river of anguish. And his great heart broke under the load of our sins. Was it any wonder that the earth did quake and the rocks did rend? Secondly, I want to tell you that not only is the letter written in crimson ink, but the content and the subject of the letter is eternal life. The Bible says that God so loved, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall have it eternal life, uh, and God makes the offer uh, in his love letter, uh, because he loves us so, uh, God desires uh, that none of us should perish, uh, but uh, I gotta tell you, uh, there's a condition uh, in the text, uh, the condition uh, to the offer, uh, it says that whoever believes uh, in him, uh, and you must believe uh, that God is, uh, or Jesus is, uh, the one and only uh, eternal Son of God. Uh, God's writing uh, a love letter, uh, and he's offering uh, us eternal life. Uh, and in this offer, uh, there's mention uh, to alternatives. Uh, either you accept uh, the terms of his agreement. And receive life everlasting, or you reject it, and on your way to a devil's hell. I'm so glad that God will and can make a way out of nowhere to well. I stop by to ask you, who is this letter? Who is this love letter? Well, the Bible says, whosoever, and I just believe that this letter is written to the whole world. That was a song that we used to sing that Jesus had the whole world in his hands. He had you and me in his hands. Man, that big letter, this love letter, is written to whosoever will. That doesn't mean you have to be the most educated. You don't have 
first Sunday in January, which is February, which is the second first Sunday in 2022. Lord, we thank you that you have allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. For Lord, we realize that there was something started off with us the first day of this new year, Lord, not here with us now. So Lord, we tell you thank you for right now. Now, Lord, we ask that you would search our hearts and our minds and remove anything that is not worthy of you, O Lord. Please, Lord, remove all unrighteousness. Then, oh Lord, make us better people, better citizens, better Christians for coming by your table, Lord. For at your table, we find peace, love, joy, and happiness. So now, Lord, we lift up this bread and this wine and ask that you would bless it and transform it from a carnal use into a spiritual use. Lord, this is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Covenant, 
would not only be hearers, but we would be doers of your word. Lord, we tell you thank you for loving us enough to give us your very best. Lord, we declare this morning we're going to serve you with our whole heart. We're going to praise you. We're going to serve you. Till we die, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. Now, Lord, we again ask that you would wipe all unrighteousness out of our hearts. Lord, help us to be better for you day by day. For, Lord, someone is watching, and we represent you. And, Lord, we want to represent you to the fullest and the rest of our goodness, that men and women may see our good works here on earth. Glorify you who are in so, Lord, we ask that you would create within us a clean heart and renew the right spirit that we may serve and tell the world that the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life. Now we come asking that may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide within each of us henceforth.